Hey, radio. Batman on y'all. Hey, Ray. Happy Sabbath day, y'all. Hey, Sandy. Happy Sabbath day, sister. What's up, Dre? Tap that screen so we can get some likes, so people can hear this word. Happy Sabbath day. We made it to another one, y'all. Ain't that a good thing? Hey, spirit. Hey, loving myself. Happy Sabbath day, sister. Good morning, family. There she go, y'all. Everybody look at Brandy. <laughs> the Kimbe is in the building, baby. The all-time block leader has arrived. Yes. Y'all see uh, Brandy? The Kimbe is back, sisters and brothers. Yes, she is. <laughs> Happy Sabbath day, sisters and brothers. Tap that screen so that we can get some likes. And so people can hear this word. Get you a pad and a pen and a King James Version Bible, please. Tell them, Lulu girl, King James Version. Charlie, let them know. King James Version. Let them know. It's good to see y'all. We got a lot of reading to do, guys. A lot of reading to do today. Tap that screen. What's up, y'all, dog? Hey, Messi. Big Mark. Brandy is in the building. Look at it, y'all. <laughs> Back down like Buster Brown. Yes. It's good to see my sister, man. Well, love. Tap that screen so we can get some likes so people can hear this word. Hey, Erica. Happy Sabbath day, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Hey, beloved. Good morning. Tap that screen so we can get some likes so people can hear this word. Hey, MK. <laughs> good morning. Hey, Lauren. Look at this family, man. It's good to see y'all. Tap away, tap away. Big Mark is in the building. Hey, Lakita. Good morning, y'all. We got a lot of reading to do. Let's let the family get in here. Tap, tap, tap. You know we shadow banned, so we got to get them lights up so we can even get 100 people in here. So, you know. We went from thousands to nothing. Satan is really trying to block people's blessings. Hey, Tina. Happy Sabbath day. Brother Greg is in the building, y'all. You know, we, I have to do the Sabbath day because the brothers didn't get, have nothing this week, but they're here. We're going to come up. We're going to read together as usual, like we do. Tap away. Tap that screen so we can get some likes so people can hear this word. Tap, tap, tap away. I'm not in a pool pit now, am I? <laughs> My goofy friend. Good morning, good morning. It's good to see y'all, man. Share the live. Share the live. Get your King James Version Bible. Pad and pen, King James Version Bible, please. Share the live with your friends, your loved ones. Let's get some folks in here. Let's get some ears in here this morning. That's right, MK. That's right. Demiliaz. Good morning, my sister. Happy Sabbath. Hey, Ree. Ree, tell them we need a King James Version Bible up in here to read. Tap away, family. Tap that screen so we can get some likes. Share the live. This is the family here. Ain't nobody but the family coming up in here. There's no, really no new people coming in because they shadow banned it. It's only family. Ain't that something? I'll take that. I'm happy with that. Good morning, good morning. Tap that screen so we can get some likes so people can hear this word. Insane, baby. What's up, Lance? What's up, Brother Sean? Thank you for that. I appreciate you for that, brother. There's no such thing as the rapture, Rick. There's no such thing. It's not in the Bible. It doesn't exist. All right? All right. Hey, CC. Insane. All right. I guess that's all TikTok got for us. We're going to get started. It's good to see y'all. <laughs>
let's get this goofy. Uh, the Bible is not meant to be taken literally. Let me get you up out of here. All right, take this literally. All right, tap that screen so we can get some likes so people can hear this word. Pad and pen, King James Version Bible, please. Uh, that's all TikTok gonna allow in is 130 people, so we gonna get started, okay? Everyone bow your heads, bow your heads. Father God, we come before you on your Sabbath day to ask for knowledge, understanding and wisdom of everything we're about to read and everything we're about to hear so that we can apply it to our life and share it with others. All this we ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. It's good to see y'all, man. Today is the Sabbath day, so you know what we do. We're going to read these commandments first and get them out because that's what you do on a Sabbath day. That's been going on since the beginning of time. Okay? Open your books up to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Let's read this real quick. We got three places to go, and we're going to get started with the reading this morning, guys. Exodus chapter 20. It's the Sabbath day, and it must be read every Sabbath day, the law of God. Exodus chapter 20. Let me read this to you. Exodus chapter 20. We want verses 1 through 17. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Let me know when you get over there, family. Let me know when you're there. Do we hear? Let's do it. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So if you people get crucifixes and Jesus pieces, I wish you luck. You getting iced out Jesus pieces, he's clearly saying don't make that. Don't wear that, don't do that, okay? Exodus chapter 20, verse five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Good job. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the six days, excuse me, six days shall thy labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. That's everybody. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thy ne thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That is the commandments of God. Follow them and make it to the kingdom. Don't listen to these goofies. Now what I want you to put on your paper is the Sabbath, volume one. This is what we're gonna discuss the morning, the Sabbath day. That's what we're gonna talk about, the Sabbath, volume one. Because to, to, to talk about the Sabbath, you're gonna need more than one reading. It's intense. The Sabbath day signifies something very important. And we're going to get to that, but not today. We're going to do the basis about the Sabbath day today. Okay? I appreciate all 164 of y'all reading this Bible with me on the Sabbath day. Okay? Head over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let's get them out. It's good to see y'all family. It's so good. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let me know when you get over there. 
<laughs> Look at Messi, Messi. That's one of mine too, Messi. It is. Well, people's making Jesus pieces and crucifixes, and, G and God clearly said, don't make any engraving images. And that's what people doing. They don't, don't nobody listen to God but y'all. Y'all the only ones. Y'all the eyeballs. Y'all the weirdos. Y'all don't, don't listen to the word. Y'all listen to God. So y'all weirdos. So just take your, take your title. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We want verses 13 and 14. Let me know when you get over there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I got a chain, I got a chain, ain't no pieces hanging off of that, you don't see no pieces hanging off my chain, this chain was given to me by the homeless, yep, I wouldn't, I would, you know, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. You ready? Let's give it to him. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's bottom line. That's the whole duty of your existence is to follow his commandments and do what you got to do for him. That's it. Being a basketball player, the best rapper in the world, the best DJ, that's secondary compared to this. People put that in their first. They want to be a mason first before they want to serve God. They want to be in a sorority before they serve this God. He coming, man. He coming. All right? Head over to Revelations. Let's get him out. Revelation chapter 22. Let me know when you get over there. Revelation chapter 22. That's paganism. A cross is an engraved image. You got Jesus inside of you. You got the Holy Ghost inside. You don't need a, a, you don't need a wood, some wood to symbolize that. You are the symbol. You, you are the temple. You are the church. You don't need nothing engraved. You don't got to make nothing to show your allegiance. Your behavior and the spirit of God that's in you going to show your allegiance to him. That's paganism. That's, that's conforming to the world. Crosses, crucifix, diamond Jesus pieces. I, the, the Roman Empire crucified three to five hundred people a day. So who was that on your neck when you ran that chain? That's what they did. The Roman Empire, they would crucify three to five hundred people a day. Smoke them, turn them to toast. And people making uh, crucifixes. You don't know who that is? Come on. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and 15. Listen to this. Blessed are they that do his commandments. He can't say it enough. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make it a lie. Every time you read, for without our dogs, that's not talking about dogs that's on four legs, rock wilders and pit bulls. That's talking about homosexuality. That's what that means. Okay? All right. Let me get this goofy out of here. Let me, let me, let me, let me get him. Let me, let me help him out. Number one, I'm not in my own land, so I got to follow the rules of the law of the land. My schedule works on the Sabbath day. So there's nothing I can do about that unless I'm going to be in poverty. That's in the Bible, goofy. When you want to criticize and try to harm people with fake words that you think that you heard me, I read my Bible. I know it's acceptable before God. And I'm trying to get closer and closer to him as possible. So if you want to judge me with lack of knowledge, then go right ahead. But you just got blocked. All right? What I want you to do, put on your paper the Sabbath day, volume one. The Sabbath day, volume one. Okay? Let me get this goofy out of my life, man. You got to go. 
You truly, I'm going to let you stay, bro. I'm going to let you stay. All right? Let me know when y'all ready. The Sabbath day, volume one. Like I told you, if we talk about the Sabbath day, we'll be here for three, four days reading it out this Bible. That's how, that's how, that's how much he, he make you, he wants you to do that forever. Perpetual. Hey, Faylene. Now let me read something to you. This comes out. Can you see that? This comes out. The World Scope Encyclopedia. Okay? This is the definition of Sunday. Okay? Now Sunday is the first day of the week. And something very horrible happened to the creation on the first day of the week. We're going to get to that. Okay, let me read this to you. The first day of the week kept as the Sabbath among most Christians in remembrance of the resurrection of Christ. Laws for the observance of Sunday were enacted as soon as the Christian religion was recognized. And who? Constantine. In 321, prohibited all business on that day except necessary agriculture, labor, and the manianism of slaves. So the Sabbath day has always been Saturday. But Constantine, when he fell in love with Christianity, he switched it over to Sunday. And so therefore you have the world going to church every Sunday instead of on the day that God sanctified and hallowed. Okay? All right? Now, let's get this goofy up out of here. Got to go, you goofy. All right? Open your books up to Genesis. It's like they blocked all the good people. They can't get in. They put all these nasty people can get in here. All these, ain't that something? All the people who want to read and get edified from reading their Bible together, they don't let them in. But the goofies with these goofy comments, all of them got free range. They can get right on in. That's Satan. Open your books up to Genesis. I want you to put a marker in Genesis. We're going to be in Genesis a lot this morning. Okay? Now let's focus on what we're reading about. We're reading about God's Sabbath day. Something that you observe because you're not playing. Okay? Exodus, Genesis, we want Genesis chapter 1. Come on, y'all. We got a lot of reading to do. Genesis chapter 1, share the live. Let me know when you get over there. You ready? Genesis chapter 1. We here? Let's do it. Genesis chapter 1. We want verses 1. Thank you for that. We want verses 1 through 23. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 23. Listen closely. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Is that the sun? Put it in the comments. Answer my question, family. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Is that the sun? Hmm? That's not the sun. We're talking about sun and moon. Sun and moon. That's what I'm talking about. That's not the sun or the moon. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So now you see why you start the Sabbath day at night. Because actually a day starts in the night. What does it say? And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening, which is nighttime, and the morning was the first day. So that's why you start your Sabbath last night when the sun went down on Friday night and you end it tomorrow when the sun goes down. You end it today on Saturday when the sun goes down. Okay? 
And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which was above the firmaments. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and a tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. This is the creation of God. We at the third day. So now we got earth, the waters, the firmament, the heaven and the earth is made, come on. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. So that first light ain't the sun. That's not the sun. God sit in what's called the third heaven. Okay? He got a light right there so he could see straight down to earth. That's the light he was. The firmament in the sky, that's the second heaven. The first heaven, just jump up and down. That's the earth. So the first heaven is earth. The second heaven is the firmament in the sky where the airplanes fly. And the third heavens is where Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of God. So that light, it's right there so he can see straight down to the earth. That wasn't the sun on the first day. Here go the sun right here. Let's see when the sun was made, what day it was made. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So now you know what day the sun was made. The sun was made the fourth day of existence. Okay? And the moon and the stars. What's up, Abro? Come on. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth upon the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. As you can see, everything our King Jesus made is good. Everything. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So now you got the birds, right? You got everything, the herbs, the grass, fish. All this was done, one through five. It took them five days to invent all that. Now let's get to the business, all right? Pop your Bible over to Genesis chapter two. Genesis chapter two. Now we at the fifth day, okay? Let's get into it. Genesis chapter two, verse five. Genesis chapter two, verse five through seven. Let's give it to them. Come on, okay, now let's read this to them. Genesis chapter two, verse five through seven. Listen closely. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground 
And the Lord God formed man, here we go, out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So now you see where we come from. We do not come from heaven. So when these priests is trying to tell you your loved ones that passed away don't make their homecoming to heaven, he lying to you. That ain't your homecoming. You come from the dust of the ground. That's what this book say. And that's where you're going to return. Because what you don't quite understand is that you are the soul. You ain't got a soul around you. Any, you are the soul, literally. That's what's going to wake up. Okay? Now, what a lot of people fail to realize, when God made this, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, he made man and woman at that very exact time. The man and the woman was made right then and there, that very second. They was made together. Both their names was Adam. Okay? Head over to Genesis chapter 5. Let's get them out. Come on, okay now. The man and the female was one on that verse. They was made together. Okay? Let me know when you get over to Genesis chapter 5. Let me know. Is you over there yet? Let me know. What's up, Big Mike? We over there, Greg, you over there? Come on, Greg, let's read this with me, me and OK now. Genesis chapter 5, we want verse 2. Genesis chapter 5, verse 2, listen closely. Male and female created he them. Didn't I just tell you that? And blessed them and called their name Adam. So he made them both at the exact same time. The woman was just inside the man. She wasn't manifested yet. And they both named was Adam. Okay? That's what God called his human creation. Genesis chapter 5 verse 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. We just read the day they was created. Okay? So now you know man and female, male and female was made at the exact same time. Both their name was Adam. Okay? All right? Pop your Bible back over to Genesis chapter 2. Let's get them out. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7. Genesis chapter 2, we want verses 7 through 25. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 25. Thank you, Sister Sandy. Let's get them out. Genesis chapter 2, share the live. Tap that screen, family. Because they got me nasty, old shadow band. It's nasty. It's getting nasty. We down to 100 people a day now. But it's y'all. <laughs> That's it. That's all we need. Family. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 through 25. Let's get them out. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. We know what that's all about. That's Adam and Eve mixed together, okay? And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is which compasses the whole land of Havala where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There was Bedlam and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gahan. The same it is that compass the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hedico. That is, it is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the, took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Ain't no woman nowhere to be found in a hundred miles. 
Adam ain't looking for no woman. You ain't, you ain't found no woman. He don't know nothing about a woman. Adam even asked for no woman. Let's see what happened, y'all. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. Now this is the very first commandment given to man. The very first commandment. And this is what's wrong with the world. The world re refuses to listen to the commands of God to get salvation. That's the problem. This is what this fight is about. Obedience. Saying, I love you, Jesus, and I'm going to listen to everything you say. Because it's only you that can give me salvation. This is what this is all about. Let's see how he fared. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. He told him, you toast. Now, ain't no death in the creation. Everything is good besides one thing. Let's go. That tree of knowledge and good and evil. Everything is good to go. That garden is set up. Anything that they want, anything that they need, they got it. Come on. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. There you go. Adam ain't never asked for Eve. That's God's doing. God said it ain't good for that man to be by himself. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So here you got Jesus hands on with Adam. They together in that garden. Just him and Jesus. We just read it. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them into Adam. You have to be physical to bring something to somebody. To see what he would call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowls of the air and to the every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a health meet for him. So Adam didn't have an equal. He seen an elephant had a mate. The bears had mates. You know. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. There she go. There go the lady. Coming straight out of the man. I just told you that. They was made at the same time, but she was in his rib. So he took him out. Now Adam got him a wife, not a baby mama. Not a girlfriend. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked and man, the man and his wife and were not ashamed because they were sin free. They weren't ashamed of nothing. They was butt naked. They didn't know. They was obedient. They obeyed. Let's go. Let's see what happened. Head on back to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, let's go. Let's get him out. Let's get him out. Come on, Mike, let's read it to him. Genesis chapter 1, we want verses 24 to 31. Share the live. Tap that screen. Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 to 31. Come on. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures of after his kind, cattle and every creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image 
after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We just read that. Okay? And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Second commandment. The man received the first one by himself. Don't eat from that tree. The man was with Adam first without Eve. That's why he's the head of your household. That's why man is always first in the eyes of God. He was dealing with him first. We just read it. Come on. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. So now they're vegetarians. They eating strawberries, oranges, bananas. They ain't no meat, ain't no death, ain't no sin. Now check it out. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. So even the animals was vegetarians. They didn't eat each other. Everything was great and good. The first, come on, let's get it. And God saw that everything that he had made, and behold, what was it, family? Put it in the comments. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. What's up, Big Sean? Everything. And the evening and the morning were the what? Were the sixth day. That's our birthday. Man and woman created. The creeping things is created. The cattle, the lions, all on the sixth day. Everything was very good. Okay? I mean everything. Now let's see what happened. Genesis chapter two, we want verses one through four. Genesis chapter two, verses one through four. Let's get them out. Come on, Nadia. Let's read this to them. Thank you for that, for that donut. Let's read this to them. Genesis chapter two, verses one through four. Listen closely. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Here we go. And on the seventh, day. God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his works, which he had made. And God blessed every day. Do that say that? This is for a goofy running book. Oh, you, worship, you can worship God any day you want to. No, you can't. You can do it all day, but he got a specific day set out for you and him. That is to refresh you. The Sabbath day is for a sin-free day. The Sabbath day is meant to refresh you with him. Now let's see what happened. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So now, that's the whole week. That's Sunday through Monday. The first week of existence. So now you got Adam and Eve, they all in the garden with God. Now they resting. They on the seventh day. Okay? Now, family, I'm going to ask you a question. Here we got the whole creation made. The garden, Adam and Eve is in the garden. They in the garden with Jesus. They resting on the Sabbath day. What you think happened on the next day, which would be the first day of the week? What happened? 
What happened on the very next day? What's up, Jazz? Hmm? What happened on Sunday, the next day? Oh, loving my... Satan came. That's why you stay away from Sunday. The devil came. The next day. You see what we're talking about? And they don't know that. They don't understand what they worship. They worship in him. That's the day he lied and started killing us. Remember God told you you was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And this is what he's talking about. So the very next day after they rested, everything was good. What did Satan do? Caused the creation to go off course. Pay attention to your book. Read it closely. Every word. Okay? Bob back over to Genesis chapter 2. We're going to make something clear. How long was that first week of existence? The first week of the creation, one through seven, when everything was good, how long did that take? Because you got people in this world that will try to throw you off and say, God can't create nothing that quick. That's God. Let's read it to him. Come on. Let's just, let's break. Y'all know this already. My family knows. But if we got any new people, it took him 7,000 years. Or seven, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Or seven days. Either one. Let's read it to him. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Come on. People goofy because y'all got these answers. So when they're running up on you trying to make your God seem like a liar or a contradictor, it could have took them seven days or 7,000 years for that first week of existence. Come on. Genesis chapter 2. We're going to read verses 16 and 17. Now this is the first this is the first commandment given to Adam. Watch what he say. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou might freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This was the sixth day. They rested on the seventh day. Satan infiltrated and compromised the creation on the, on the eighth day of creation. So now you got Jesus saying, Adam, as soon as you eat of that, in the day that you eat of it, you a piece of toast. In the day. That's what it say, right? Am I, am I mistaken? Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, yeah. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou, thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. 282 people here at 4, 44 in the morning. It's good reading with y'all on the Sabbath day. Now let's see what's going on with this. Head over to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. Let me know when you get over there, family. Let me know when you get over there. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. You there? Interesting. We're there yet? Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. Come on. Come on, Patricia. Let's read it to him. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. So Adam lived to be 930 years old, but God just told him in that day that you eat of that tree, you're going to die. Let's see what he's talking about. This is how atheism started. This, this is what we're talking about right now. 
They call this the contradiction, a great contradiction of the Bible. And they just didn't take the time to read. Pop your book over to 2 Peter. Let's get them out. I want y'all to know this stuff. And some people who don't know it, they know now. My family know this already. We don't read this hundreds of times. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but we don't read it a pretty much. Second Peter chapter three. Let me know when you get over there. Let's see what the let's see what's up with that. Second Peter chapter three. You over there? Let's do it to him. Come on, Lakita. Let's read this to them. Second Peter chapter three, verse eight. Listen closely. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So now we read Adam lived to be 930 years old. He didn't make it through that day, y'all. God ain't a liar. One day is a thousand years. Adam lived to be only 930. Turned him into a piece of toast. That's a physical death, not a spiritual death. We're dealing with the spiritual death in our generations. Everybody's spiritually dead. Big difference. Physical. Okay? Now, the oldest man in this Bible is a boy called Methuselah. He was 900 and I think 69 years old. Somebody look it up, make sure I'm right, because I don't want anybody to say I'm a liar. That's the oldest boy in this book. 969 years old, that boy was. You see how old they, you see how everything was pure? Everything was good. Until Satan put his little stanky self in it. Okay? Now we got everything situated. We got uh, Adam and them don't sin, you know. After that, you know what happened, right? All hell broke loose. They disobeyed the commandment. Cain don't start. In fact, Cain inherited the murder spirit that Satan gave him, killed his brother. Then you got the men running around crazy, giving people bad birth control. They not being fruitful and multiplying because they only want the women who ain't had babies. They eating blood, they drinking blood, they killing animals and eating them and animal meat ain't even on the, ain't even on the menu. You got watchers angels that don't came down. I'm talking about all hell broke loose on the creation. Watcher angels don't came down on integrated with human women and made giants. You know, these angels taught you how to do them lashes. That's where that come from. Angels taught you about them lashes that you girls are wearing and the makeup. Yep. Them angels taught you how to make those weapons, those Glock 9s and those chest pieces and body armor and all that. The angels taught you all that evil stuff. Yep. So when you're putting them lashes on, young lady, you, you, you don't do, you, y'all do not know. He coming. He coming. Yep, have fun. You have a whole lot of fun now in that pleasure. Because he's coming to get you. You just don't want to obey. So now you see hell don't broke loose on the creation. And ultimately what he did was, what did he ultimately do? Put it in the comments because y'all not, y'all not, y'all not goofy. What did, what, did, what did Jesus do? When all hell broke loose on his creation, what did he decide to do? Hmm? Put it in the comments. Toast the whole earth. What did he do to him? The whole entire earth. Thank you, Ree. He flooded this bad boy. Thank you, Big Mike. He flooded this boy. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Hector. Flooded. Now, now the stuff they do, all hell broke loose on the creation. Now, fast forward to 2023. All hell breaking loose. Guess what he about to do again? Guess what he about to do? Burn it up. Because people don't want to obey. They still don't want to obey. This is what it's all about. Obedience. 
to me. I'm your God. But you chose Satan. You still listening to him from the very first, from the very beginning. Okay, come on, let's get him out. So now we see time, how God deals with time. One day to him could be a thousand years or a thousand years could be one day. Bottom line. Okay. Pop your Bible over the Hebrews. Let's get them out. Hebrews chapter four. Let me know when you get there. Come on, Tina. Let's read this to them. We got the entire chapter. Hebrews chapter four. Just obey family. My family better obey to the best of your ability, to the best that you can. Come on, Tina, let's give it to him. Hebrews chapter four, we want the entire chapter. Let's read this. Let us therefore fear, least the promise being left us often offering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So we heard this book, we read this book. We choose. Some people heard the exact same thing we heard, but they did this. Take your Bible and your Jesus and that's what they do. But you decided, hey, I'm, 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 no, okay. You live by this. They don't, okay? For we which have believed do enter into rest. We believe in him. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall not enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on the wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Did we just not read that? Didn't we just read it? Put it in the comments. I appreciate all 311 y'all making it. We just read that. Okay? And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached, enter in not because of unbelief. The Israelites murmuring, complaining, this is what he's talking about. You see, let's help Danny P out. Danny P got a document saying that the Israelites received the commandment of the Sabbath day on Mount Sinai. That is a plum dumb lie. That wasn't the first time the Sabbath day was given. We read it in Genesis and he didn't give it. But Adam and Eve rested with him in the garden on the seventh day. That is a plum dumb lie. The, 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 the Sabbath day was not first announced to the Israelites during the commandments. No, it wasn't. Okay? Let's get it out. Again, he limits a certain day, saying in David, today after so long a time, as it was said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts and do your Sabbath day and do his commandments. Come on. For if Jesus has given them rest, then would he not after word have spoken of another day? Do you hear this? Jesus said, if I would have told you, I would have told you. I didn't change the day. We just read it. Constantine changed the day, not him. He said, if I, if, if, if I would have changed, I would have spoken of it. When I, would, I told you everything else. Let's read it to him. Come on. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. Pay attention. For if Jesus has given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? So did we read, since we've been reading, have we ever heard Jesus say out of his mouth, hey, I want y'all to go to church on Sunday? We never read nothing like that. This Bible is the truth. They try to tell you the Sabbath day and in the New Testament, we reading it right now. We beg to differ. We beg to differ. We read the Sabbath day right now. Listen closely. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. Then remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That's us. We know what today is. 
For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. That's what you're doing. That's going to be the Sabbath day part volume two. The rest. That's very important. That's talking about Jesus' thousand year reign. If you can't do the Sabbath day, you're definitely not going to be a part of that. That's Sabbath day value too. We'll talk about that another day. Okay? Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open into the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. So is grace something you can just keep using to sleep with people, wife? What did it say in 16? Listen closely. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. When they were shooting and you lived, in the time of need, I need grace. When COVID hit and you live through it with grace in the time of need, you still here. When that car wreck was going on, it went, you got right out the car and did just like this. Grace is not to be played with in the time of need. Some people might get sick in the future. You need grace for another day. Don't play like these goofies doing. This Bible will let you know. Grace in the time to help you in a time. That's you that, oh Lord Jesus, they over here shooting. You can see the bullets going past your head. You didn't get hit. Help in the time of need. Okay? Let's do it. Don't play with him. That's a gift. And people play with it all day long, baby. They played with it all night last night. Today is Saturday. How many people you know was outside boogie, woogie, woogie in? Drinking, dancing to Beyonce and having a good old time. Yeah, just like the days of no. It's a Sabbath day. Not y'all. They right now buying food because they got drunk, drunk stomach. They got to get something to eat because they got their stomach full of alcohol. They spending money. Sabbath day. Come on. Head over to Exodus 16. Thank you, Nadia. Let's shut Goofy Danny P down with this book. The first time the Israelites, the Sabbath day was mentioned to the Israelites, it was not on Mount Sinai. I don't know what book that these people is reading. Exodus chapter 16. The Sabbath day was mentioned to the whole world, so therefore the whole world got to do it through Adam and Eve. Everybody got to do it. And anybody with an Israelite, if, if, if you're around an Israelite, that means you got to do the Sabbath day. And everybody around an Israelite. The Israelites are scattered all through all the nations. I'm an Israelite. Any black person you see, that's an Israelite. You sitting right next to them, so you got to do the Sabbath day too. That's what the books say. This boy's so retarded, he don't read his Bible. Exodus chapter 16, let's get him out, Tina. Exodus chapter 16, we want the entire chapter. Let's give it to him. <coughs> That's my Chicago one. We read whole chapters together. Unless Brandy want to get up here and do some read. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I think that's the day the, the sky going to pull back. And Jesus is going to be coming. Brandy going to be up here reading. And here comes Jesus. Like, oh, Jesus, couldn't you just wait 15 minutes? He was just reading. <laughs> Let's do it, y'all. Come on. 
Exodus chapter 16. We want the entire chapter. Come on, Tina, let's give it to him. You ready? That's right. Look, look at Mark. Like, as soon as that day comes, Brandy, okay, I'm ready. Here comes Jesus. We ain't going to be here to read. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm glad you back, sister. We so glad to see you. We felt empty. We felt empty. We missed Sandy the other day. Everybody looking for Sandy. She was asleep. <laughs> Y'all are the best. Y'all the best. Come on. We still got, we still got family members here, though. Let's do it. Exodus chapter 16, the entire chapter. Let's give it to him. And they took their journey from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of the sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they departing out of the land of Egypt. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Got to wet my whistle. <clears throat> 